Hi, my name is Anthony Atkins. I'm the Belmont County GIS Director. Um, Belmont County is a, a rural, mostly rural county within Belmont County, Ohio, which is, sits east of um, eastern portion of Ohio, right on the Ohio River. Uh, the GIS department within Belmont County is also a division of the County Engineers uh, Department. So, uh, obviously, working with the county uh, infrastructure with roads, bridges, um, culverts, um, we're small enough that we have the autonomy to work with other GIS departments. So we're not a countywide GIS department as much as we are a department, our departmental GIS department within the county engineers. But because we're so small, we are open to working with um, the various uh, departments within the county. Uh, one of the main departments that utilizes GIS the most would be our 911 department. Um, and that's exactly um, the department that uh, I'd like to at least talk about in with respect to um, the issues we have uh, with addressing. Um, the addressing, uh, the 911 is responsible. So in my presentation, I'll talk about um, the problems we're having, uh, the process that we um, uh, took to sort of solve the problem and the final solution in doing that. So within um, Belmont County, 911 is responsible for maintaining the addressing database, um, which is um, great for uh, the uh, first responders. But the issue is, is that the, uh, the addressing, uh, the way the addressing is set up, it's designed to benefit uh, the first responders more than um, placements for every, everyday people. So as the uh, standard address will have uh, uh, house number, street name, um, city, state, zip code, the uh, uh, 911 address will have the house number and street name, but instead of a city, a mailing city, uh, 911 utilizes a township unless that address falls within a municipality. So in some cases you have a, a city, in the other places a township. Um, also another problem that uh, isn't standard with uh, 911 addresses in some in some cases the um, uh, road designation is utilized for addressing such as County Road 72 instead of a common name. Uh, uh, and that will throw us off. So uh, some departments within the county uh, require some sort of address validation. So before, uh, so one such department is um, the uh, Board of Elections, uh, which is uh, sort of really getting busy <laughs> right around this time with elections coming up. People are trying to register to vote. Uh, and before they do that, they have to first confirm um, if an address is valid or not. Um, to do that, um, they, uh, the process that they do right now is that they go on to our uh, um, county website, um, our web mapping application and put in an address. Um, if the address is valid, it will come up in that search result and they're able to then register the address. And in some cases, uh, uh, a valid address is placed within uh, is within the uh, county, but first because it's not an exact match, it uh, an address doesn't um, come back from our web application. Uh, a couple other issues with our web app application is that um, since a third party um, maintains our application, we only get one update per month. So if a, a house has just been built, uh, a new address has been um, uh, applied for and granted um, that address, depending on when our last update to the map was, uh, may not show up in our, our our database quite yet. So we needed a way to verify that a valid address was done. So the way that is that's done is the uh, Board of Elections um, rep uh, representative would send an email to the 911. Uh, GI 911 uh, director. 911 director would typically quickly find out if they, an address is 
uh, valid um, based off of his knowledge of the, the system, the data, and all the runs and calls that they, they utilize. So he has a pretty good knowledge of the system. Every once in a while, an address will come up that's a valid address, um, but it's not easily um, uh, figured out if it's valid or not. And that's when GIS and the Bonham County engineers gets involved. And that's when we sift through historical documents and to figure out if uh, an address is valid based off of historical names. Sometimes uh, uh, a street will be dedicated to one thing and late, later changed to another. Although the historical name is still valid for the addressing, um, it's not currently used except for people that have lived there for a long time or uh, if they have uh, family members, if they're moving into a family member house that utilize the old address, um, we aren't always able to uh, sort of uh, pair the two. Um, so um, once we figure out that we, we update our aliases for that particular address and then tell the engineer's office to, or the uh, Board of Education that that address is valid. So when um, I learned about PlaySkey, I thought, how could we use this? How can we uh, apply this uh, process to our current process or better our current process so that uh, we can validate addresses um, without going through this long process of emails? Um, for our, our current roadblocks, from what I can tell, our current roadblocks were that our 911 data didn't currently have um, street address or um, um, mailing city, nor did it have a zip code. Uh, after plan doing some um, research and playing around with the place key, I learned that um, in order to get a place key, uh, you didn't necessarily have to have both a uh, address, uh, I mean, um, parcel uh, mail city or uh, and a zip code, you only need it one or the other. Um, so what I ended up doing was taking our uh, 911 address data, converting it to points, and doing a spatial join with our zip code uh, file so that our mailing, our, our uh, 911 addressing database then has a 911 or a zip code field. I then um, wrote a simple, straightforward, um, Python script to then um, request an API key for the addresses within um, our 911 address. So uh, with all of our addresses having a place key, um, the next question was, how could I distribute, how can I allow the other departments that need to utilize um, 911's addressing to easily access the, the data? Um, I could have created uh, standalone applications um, to place on people's computers, uh, but then the same problem that we have with our web mapping application is, um, would apply to the standalone application. As soon as I put the data uh, onto their computers, it becomes outdated as soon as 911 updates their data, right? So uh, I thought that the best um, solution would probably be some sort of web environment. Um, uh, that way, I can update the data as needed, and they would always have access to it, regardless of where they were trying to access the data, from their home computers, from their work computers, from a phone. Um, it made it that much easier. So what I ended up doing was I ended up creating um, an application utilizing Python and Flask. Um, and um, uh, the, the application is simply a uh, simple web form, uh, address form. What that web form does is um, the uh, election board member would submit uh, an address based off of what the citizen has given them. And that form would then go out and um, go out and request its own place key from, um, from place key. And then it would take that place key uh, that it got from uh, that first submission and then compare it to what is available in the 911 database of the list of these keys that I, I got for the addresses. If there's a match, then that address that 911 has in their database is then returned to the user 
um, has a valid address. Um, if no place key is found or if the um, address is, comes up as invalid, then that person, uh, then a non, uh, either an address error or address not found error would then be returned. So what I ended up with was basically something like this, a uh, very basic um, web form um, that uh, is available via the web. Right now, currently, since I'm still in sort of beta testing, it's all done in virtual environment on my local machines that I've um, sort of presented to the various departments. Um, so it's not quite live yet, but a basic web um, form available. Um, and then the uh, person would um, submit uh, an address, a basic address. Uh, um, right now it doesn't have a POI name um, because most people that go into uh, register to vote usually won't say that they work or live at a uh, point of interest. That's why I restrict it to just an address. And then um, once they um, hit submit, they either get uh, an error or um, as an, um, stated, uh, uh, the address listed for that everyone has in their database. Uh, and essentially that is the uh, overall workings and how I came up with the idea and how we're currently using it. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, is there any questions? This was great, Anthony. Really, really great, uh, really great background on this. Um, and, and really appreciate you diving into uh, these types of uh, these types of problems that you guys had to deal with. And I, looking at your presentation, I saw even on that last example, I saw, what was it, Gill's uh, Lane or Gill's Street was the input and it was outputted and matched to Gill's Lane. So really impressive right. on that side. Uh, question for you is, um, when you're working with other types of agencies within the county, right, how often are they, uh, how often are they coming to you with requests versus you sort of having the tooling out there for them to be able to perform their jobs effectively? And how do you sort of straddle that line between working with and making sure that you can still tackle your, the amount of work that you have to do? Um, well, for the most part, uh, various departments don't always voluntarily come to us uh, for work unless they're uh, absolutely um, in a bind. Um, currently we're working with Outside of uh, certain departments, 911 is um, our, one of the outliers that they truly understand how, how important GIS is because they obviously use it and utilize it every day. Uh, other departments need some coaxing. Um, in some cases, um, uh, they sort of maybe um, publish a map that isn't quite um, cartographically friendly. So I reach out to them and sort of offer our services. As far as juggling um, work that we do sort of like with the engineers, it hasn't been that much of an issue yet. Um, we are a small department. So maybe in the future, it may become an issue where we're juggling um, engineers work with other department work. But right now, it hasn't been too much of an issue. That's, that's really great. We did get one question in, or really a, a comment in the, uh, in the message uh, in the chat about sort of uh, NG911. And, and can you give a little bit of background onto where Belmont County is in the NG911 process and how you guys have started to think about this? Uh, currently, um, and again, I'm sort of a, a support uh, person. Uh, I have been brought in uh, um, sort of as a a support person for. So I'm not 100% uh, uh, brought up on uh, Belmont County's 911. As far as I know, we're still in the planning stages for next gen 911. One of the things that I've learned in this is that uh, there, there's different uh, definitions for next gen 911, right? Uh, there's a county over um, uh, adjacent to us, um, Harrison County, who has claimed they're claiming that they're currently using next gen 911, um, but what they mean by that is something completely different than what Belmont County will be utilizing next gen 911. Uh, if it's the next gen, if, if uh, the question asker is referring to the next gen 11 that I'm thinking of, we're still in the planning phases. And um, from my understanding, those guys are still sort of uh, 
in talks with on development. Uh, as far as 911's uh, um, readiness, as far as the, from my understanding, as far as the, the features needed to implement that, um, those are features that we've already been um, uh, providing to um, the GIS uh, 911 department as it is. So whenever it's time to actually transition to the next gen 911, it's just a matter of, actually there's really no difference on our part. It's just a matter of providing that data to the um, contractors that will be implementing uh, that system. That's really great. Um, and we had another question in the chat. Um, and uh, and I and so I don't know if you necessarily know this offhand, but when you're working with addressing, uh, especially with things that are USPS deliverable versus not, um, do you have any sense for the number of addresses that you guys work with within Belmont County that are USPS deliverable addresses versus addresses that are valid? Uh, this sort of dovetails into another conversation that was having across how it validates to uh, to non-USPS validated addresses. So just curious what your experience is with, with USPS validated versus not. Well, and, and I think that is um, a, a great question because that is one of the, the aspects of um, 911's addressing is that, uh, like I, like I mentioned, the 911 addresses, even though that 911 is responsible for assigning these addresses, um, they're, they don't always match with uh, the US, the deliverable addresses, mainly because we, we don't use the mail city and we don't use the zip code. Um, so there is, and I, I did notice that there, there may be some sort of, uh, missing as, uh, some portion of the addresses that we do have that aren't exactly being uh, 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 given a place key because they, they don't align with what USPS has as a deliverable address um, because it's, it may be slightly different or too different. We also have, we're dealing with uh, a database that was um, passed on from one administration to the next that's been uh, probably close to two decades old now um, where fields were used, uh, for instance, we have a house number suffix and an address to field. The house numbering su 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 suffix is typically uh, used for one aspect, but at some point it was changed to something else. So they switched to an address to address, um, um, which is supposed to designate the suite or apartment number. And then even that got changed to um, designate uh, whether it's a, a well pad, a mailbox, or a, a light pole. Um, so uh, a lot of our addresses aren't going to be exactly USPS addressing. Um, like I said, it, they're the database is designed or had emergency first responders in mind before uh, the USPS deliverable aspect of it. Excuse me. <clears throat> That's right. That's really great background. Thank you for that. Um, how so? Um, as you've started to really get your hands around um, the, the the place key API and the sort of uh, and, and having this common join key throughout, and we saw this one example between nine one one and voter registration details. Like, what other types of workflows have you started to think about? Um, in, in order to best accomplish the, the sort of the task at hand? And, and how have you seen that place keys might help with some of these other projects that might be top of mind for you? Uh, I actually thought about a couple of things. One, um, just a, a general, once we have more of a, uh, more people using place keys, creating a um, address locator to um, base solely off uh, the uh, place key uh, field, as opposed to having the various uh, single uh, various uh, address locators. So you can have a field, single field address locator or you can have the multi-field address locator uh, for me, or you can have your uh, 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 merged um, place uh, address locators. For me, having that single field uh, would make things a little bit easier when uh, placing, key, uh, placing uh, points or data in a table, uh, but also, think that this may be a great opportunity or a different way, not necessarily a better way, but a different way of aggregating data 
a lot of times we we aggregate to um, uh, with respect to the health department they aggregate up to a, a zip code or um, or a city block sometimes those work for certain aspects i think being able to aggregate up to these where um, polygons uh, would give us a different way to view the data so those are a couple ways that i've thought about using that's a really interesting use case around using the hexagons and the where components to be able to do some sort of aggregations within that. That's really interesting. Um, uh, and so when you've um, like when you started to think about a lot of these analyses, talk me through like currently what are the types of tools that you use today? to best accomplish those types of things? And, and what would, if looking, looking many months and years down the road, what are the types of sort of integrations that you think PlaySkey would provide a huge amount of value in within the tools that you use every day? Uh, well, the tools I use mainly um, fall within the SRI toolbox. Anything that SRI provides, um, within our licensing, I, I, I utilize as much as I can. Um, that coupled with my ability to, uh, to program, I, I don't like to call myself a programmer. I, I'm someone that likes to tinker and to build uh, things to mostly automate uh, my jobs. Um, a lot of things that I do um, when I first got started were long drawn out processes and I hate um, um, tedious um, uh, projects. So as soon as I, I, I see those projects and uh, I know I can automate them, I use my uh, programming ability with the various tools in ESRI's toolbox to automate them. Um, the way I see uh, the, the ability to go out and get a new key or request a key at any time um, uh, via programming opens up a possibility of various uh, applications that could be uh, built. Um, Standalone applications, um, like I, I potentially um, thought about for the uh, the application I built, or web-based applications. I, I think the the possibilities truly are endless when when you're talking about uh, uh, locating uh, data based off of different uh, or different variations of of the same address. That's, that's really great. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody here who's had to work with address level data sets, especially when it's inputted from users or from individuals can always, be, can always be a challenge. And, and I think messy is uh, messy is an understated word when we're thinking about what those inputs kind of look like. Um, this is, this was really great. Uh, Anthony, um, thank you so much for, for taking the time here. Uh, uh, um, I think that's that's broadly the the extent of the, the questions that we had. Um, but, but this was been this has been really great. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna the, there's a, still a few minutes left in a couple other in a couple other sessions as well um, that that we'd recommend diving into. And of course, this will be recorded. But Anthony, is there anything last that you might share to, to any other sort of county GIS or, or city GIS teams that might be thinking about adopting and working with PlaceKey? I, I think um, at least playing around with it, there's nothing, there's nothing, um, it's a no um, loss situation. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, you learn, for me, I've learned um, <laughs> Working with that, I've learned a lot more about uh, the current data that I, I, I work with in supporting 911, but also uh, uh, helps me think about how to utilize this in, in various different ways. So I think if you work if you work with addresses in any way or parcel data in any way, uh, it might be uh, it's a it's a win win situation. You might as well just at least try it, uh, like we have. Uh, I think this is something that will help streamline a lot of um, our, our data, at least clean up. At the worst, it, it will help us clean up um, data that we know is uh, may not be exactly 100% right. Um, so it's, it's also a method for helping us clean up the data. 
This is great. Thank you so much, Anthony. This was this was really awesome getting to hear your background and getting to hear the types of uh, stuff that you've been playing around with here. Um, thank you again so much. And, and again, anybody who's still in here who who has another extra five minutes, dive into another session as well. We'd love to see you in there to catch the tail end of a couple other sessions. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you.